Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, everyone. This is Ted Thomas, and this is a podcast that's about tax lien certificates and tax deeds and about wealth building. Things very important to me, so I call this podcast Imagine Wealth Without Risk. And each time I do a podcast, I like to have a a short interview, sometimes a long interview. I think today you'll get right in between, right in the middle, but you're really going to like what we talk about today because my guest is Craig Cody, and uh, Craig's up in New York State, and he has some very interesting information for us. So, Craig, uh, let's start off. First of all, can you hear me okay? Oh, I hear you great, Ted. Thank you very much for having me today. Good. I'm glad to have you because you have a subject that's near and dear to everyone, but they hate to talk about it. So now we got a professional and that's what I need as a professional to help me and all my clients with this with this business of taxes. But first of all, let's talk about you. Tell me who you are, where you are, what you do, what your family is. Give us a little insight into you. Sure. Our office is located in Garden City, New York. We're a CPA firm. I'm married for just, just had my 30th anniversary, three kids, all grown, mm. all doing well. Been yeah. practicing for about 19 years on my really? own for about 10 now. We have clients all over the country. We focus on tax planning and basically what tax planning is, helping clients keep more of what they make. Oh, good. Now, how about your your, your life around town and stuff like that? Do you, do you play golf? Do you do uh, other things? You're like me, you just work all the time. Uh, <laughs> a lot of work, a lot of work. A lot I, like of work. To go, I like to go out on a boat and I like to walk down oh. by the beach. Being on Long Island oh. is like being in Florida. There's a lot of ocean. Oh, yes, there's a lot of ocean, yeah. I'm trying to think of that little island that was south of there. Was that called Fire Island or something? Fire like Island, that? yes, Fire Island. I really, yeah. In my youth, which was a long time ago, I, I dated a wonderful woman from a young girl we were all in college, that kind of thing, in Blue Point. And so they showed me around quite a bit. So I really loved that. In June, July, and August, what could be better than New York and New England, right? That's June, right. July and August. That's you, right. You only get three months. So you got to cover it when you get it. Yes, you got it. You really yeah. need to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome aboard to my podcast. I'm glad to have you here. And uh, let's get into talking about business because my podcast is about building wealth. And it's it's not difficult to build wealth. In my opinion, it's not difficult, but keeping it is another whole problem. And so you're specializing in tax planning and things like that. So let's talk a little bit about minimizing taxes and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to interrupt you a few times because I know what's going to happen with this kind of podcast because I've had guest speakers like you come on other things that I've done. And so I'm going to interrupt you from time to time so that you can give your contact information. The reason I do that is people in the car, when you're driving along, oh, gee, what was that guy's name? What was he doing? That kind of thing. And I want them to be able to be able to communicate with you. So let me make my first interruption is, and what is, your, what is the address where you'd want people to uh, contact you? So uh, we're going to uh, actually have a landing page, which is going to be com forward slash okay. Imagine Wealth. And they can okay. actually request there a free copy of our book, uh, The 10 Most Expensive Tax Mistakes That Cost Business Owners Thousands. We will actually send them a paper wow. copy. Wow. First of all, <laughs> thanks for the book. We really appreciate that. But let's get the address out there slowly. <laughs> so it's Craig Cody and company.com forward slash imagine wealth. And we'll make sure you have that in the show notes. Okay, good show. I love all that. And you have a book that you, you wrote or you did with your partners? Or how did uh, you do that? I, I wrote this one. My first one was secrets of a tax free life. I co-authored that was an Amazon bestseller. Nice. I wrote myself and it talks about different things that business owners should be doing to keep more of what they okay. make. Okay. Let's just talk about it. Just get, let's uh, get right into it. So tell me about some proactive planning that we should start to think about to minimize the taxes. Well, how about just taking the time to plan? Most people do not take time to plan. And what most CPAs consider tax planning is sitting you down in late November, early October and say, you need to make a $32,000 payment by January 15th. That's what <laughs> they consider tax planning. We look oh, at tax no, planning as ways to help you take advantage of the tax code and keep more of that money. All right. So give me some examples of that. Okay. How about have operating out of the correct business entity? Are you operating as a sole proprietor? Are you operating as a partnership? Corporation and S corporation, is it the most efficient vessel to operate your business? And typically what happens is the person wants to open up a business. They speak with their attorney and he says, oh, former 
LLC or form an S corporation. Right. There's no right. communication between the CPA, the client, and the attorney. So if they take a little bit of time, they could usually save significant tax because having the wrong entity can hurt you from a tax perspective. Well, you know, I, I'm gonna, I have people that uh, listen to my podcast and the people that I've been doing business. I've been in the same business for, for the last 25 years. And I have some people that make an extra 25 or 30 or even 50. I don't want to brag too much if I have people to do 100. They make $50,000 and they haven't even thought about how they're going to hold on to it. In addition to whatever else they're earning, they have suddenly purchased this house at some rock bottom price from the tax man and then they resell it and you get the idea. They make yes. a huge amount of money. So what should they, so while they, while they are getting ready to do this, they should be doing what? They should be doing just running it just like they run a regular business. You know, if uh -huh. they're able to have a retirement plan, can they hire their kids? Can they have a home office? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about a home office? Let's start with that. Now, you said okay. before, you're standing in your home office, right? Right, actually, so, yeah. So what yeah. that does yeah. is that opens up the opportunity to now your commute, if you have two offices, is no longer a commute. It's travel from one office to another. And how about the home athletic facility? Did you ever hear of that one? No, I never did. So, you mean that gym I've got in the other room? How about that gym? And even better, how about that pool out back? Oh, my pool it hasn't even been swimming for a month. Oh my gosh! Well, anyway, but yeah. as long as it's as long as it's available for the use of your employees and their families, it's deductible if it's part of your home athletic facility. I got it. Gee whiz! No, I never thought of that. That's right. really great. Okay, so those are a couple of the kind of things. And when people come to you, do they do you usually bring them in and, and do like a counseling, or, or can they do this on the phone? Or how do they do this? So we we actually have clients all over the country, and we're in New York, so we typically do it via oh. Zoom. So our process oh. is we'll have a call. They'll send us some tax returns. We'll do an analysis. We'll get them on a Zoom call. We'll go through the analysis and we'll say, okay, looks like we could save you $25,000 a year. Oh, I love Simple this. planning, this no great. rocket science. So my client that's sitting here in Florida or sitting over in, in, in some place in Texas can be working with you just like working with anybody in their hometown. All across the country. The internet's a wonderful thing. Oh, man, that's terrific. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Tell me some, about some of the mistakes these people make. I know they make them, that's for sure. Uh, how about not hiring their family when they can? Maybe they have kids that are doing work in the business, all right? Yeah. And under the new tax code, you could hire your kids as long as basically they're over seven years old and you pay them a reasonable wage. They can make up to $12,000 a year, and you're not going to, they won't pay tax on that money, and neither will you. Really? Up to 12000 You have to pay up to 12000 Exactly. They put some of that money into a Roth IRA, and by the time they're 40, they have a lot oh, of money, right? Wow. Oh, exactly. A lot. Or, a lot. or maybe they buy some tax lien certificates inside that Roth IRA. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they can do anything in those IRAs now. I have people buy properties, buy tax liens. Yeah, do the whole thing. I like that. Okay, good. So not hiring. Give me a couple of those uh, more mistakes. How about taking advantage of qualified business income, which is part of the new tax law, which allows you to write off up to an additional 20% of your income. That person that maybe makes $300,000 gets an extra $60,000 deduction. And there's a couple of things they sometimes they have to jump through a few hoops to make sure that they qualify for it. But, you know, just taking the time to plan and make sure you, you could actually take advantage of that. So that $60,000 deduction could be worth what? 20 grand. I was going to say at least 20 grand. Yeah. I was thinking more than that. Let me ask you this. What is it? What is that? A qualified, what did you call that? It's called the Qualified Business Income Deduction, Section 199. It's part of the, yeah. the Trump tax plan. And, and then there's some people, depending on what type of business they're in, they're limited in the, in the deduction unless they meet certain other criteria. So that's where planning comes in. Yeah. If you're going to make a lot of money, you should step in anywhere right away because uh, what the heck? Why, why, why do all that? You, you might be able to cut off two or three years of work just by... I'm not paying it all up to Uncle Sam. I have more money to work with. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't know anything about a qualified plan. Can you talk about that a little bit? What, yeah, well, what that well, means, the qualified, well, qualified business. Just, income, just the way they, just the way the government decided to break it up. There's qual what they call qualified business income, and they and they called specified service business income. And that's yeah. something you should probably leave up to your CPA. But just make sure you have some conversations with him or her before the end okay. of the year. Okay. Make sure you're able yeah. to fully take advantage of. Yeah. 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 
Okay, I really appreciate you, you taking the time to, to walk us through this. Tell everybody who you are again, Craig. So I'm Craig Cody. I'm a CPA. We're based out of New York. We have clients across the country. And our website is craigcodyandcompany.com. And if you go to forward slash Imagine Wealth, we will give you a free copy of our latest book, The 10 Most Expensive Tax Mistakes That Cost Business Owners Thousands. Well, is that like a downloadable book or is that an actual book? That's an actual book, paper copy. Wow, paper copy. Uh, something they can put in their briefcase when they're on the train or got some extra time wait, waiting at the dentist office or something. <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay. All right. You've been doing this for uh, 20 years now, or real close to 20 years. Tell me about some of the biggest mistakes that people make. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've got a lot of clients that make money, but they don't do any of the planning you're talking about. And they don't know if you told them, now I'm not telling them, you tell them. If you told them they could get 100 tax deductions because of the way they do the right, things the right way, they're, they might believe you. But the average guy doesn't believe that this tax code is set up to help business people. It doesn't matter what's a dental practice or a practice of buying tax liens and deeds. It doesn't matter what, what the, the business is business, right? right? Some parts are unique. And so what are some of the mistakes these guys make? And what are, I, I know that they don't do it. How do we get them? to make the change. In other words, I like to get people motivated so they actually do something, but now we've got to get them motivated not to just do something, but keep the money that they have. So how do so, we get them motivated? So let's just it? say our, our average business owner client is saving somewhere between 20 and $30,000 a year in taxes. So if that doesn't help you, I don't know what Whoa. will, but you should be communicating with your CPA and saying, what can I do? Okay. What can I do differently to save some money? And typically when I ask a client or prospective client, when was the last time your CPA came to you with an idea to save taxes? They look at me, they get that glazed over look in their eyes because that's not the conversation. Most CPAs are focusing on putting the right numbers in the right boxes, which is great. You need to do that. But yeah, yeah, take it yeah. to the next level, have some conversations and say, what can we do differently? How can we save some money? Okay. So you're, you're not just, uh, you're not interested in the, this person to send, you know, take a car deduction or medical deduction, whatever. You're going to come up, with, you're going to show them what the code, would you call that code 199 or whatever it was? That's what um, section 199. But, Correct. But there's a lot yeah. of different things they can do. And they might be a couple thousand here, a couple thousand here, but they, you know what, they all add up to a nice chunk of change. And whether that's an extra yeah. vacation for the family, some yeah. new shoes for the the wife or the kids or the husband, whomever yeah. it is, or, or more money put away for retirement. Right, right. Who are you looking for as a client? Because that's important because, you know, the podcast, we get all kinds of people that listen to us and uh, some are just starting. Some have been, uh, they're all pros. Some of them uh, have stuck with their same P CPA for 30 years and whatever. But who are you looking for a client? Who's, a, well, who's our, the best client for you? Our clients are business owners that are paying taxes. Business owners paying taxes. I've got a lot of those. I'm sure I've got, got a lot of stuff. That's good. And any certain income, or you're open to that? Typically, somebody that's making over 150000 plus. So the more taxes they're, they're paying, the more help we can give them. Okay. And so, so you're looking for someone you can help them save, say, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Correct. Correct. So you, you want to be able to save them. That's a hell of a reward. That team to pay you. Uh, uh, half a person working for you for the whole year. Right. Or how much okay. more marketing can a business owner do with that money? Invest it into oh. their business, buy equipment, whatever it is that they want to yeah. do with that yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. Pay half a half of the average car. Boom. Just like that. That's right. Yeah, that's 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 true. Really. Okay. So walk me through the average client that comes in and give me some ideas of how you handle these things because they're all saying, Yeah, Ted, I call there and I get 14 different people and, and whatever. Are you a big uh, concern or do you have a small group of people because you have a boutique or what yeah, are you? I would, I would consider us a boutique firm. There's 12 of us here. Uh -huh. There's three other CPAs. We have a good staff. We basically, our, our client, basically the process here is we have an initial phone call. If it looks like it might be a good fit, they send us their tax returns. We do an analysis. We go through a Zoom call with them. If they want a tax plan, we'll do the tax plan for them. If they want to go forward after there and work with us, we do all their bookkeeping. What's different about us is we have a Zoom call once a month with all our clients. Wow. We go through the balance. Well, that's unusual. And we that's make really sure, special, isn't it? Yep. It's yeah. how you point out the things that they're not doing so to save some money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're, you're guiding these people and doing their plan. You're not just waiting. You're not 
uh, just get adding all the numbers up and saying, well, here's what you owe. You're going to guide them and say, don't do this, do that. You're, you're, gonna, you're an advisor. Correct. Yeah. I don't know if you have to be a legal thing to be an advisor or not, but yeah, but, you're, but that's what you're doing. You're you're guiding them so that they don't pay taxes next year, the year after the year. Well, they, they're that. going to pay. If you're making money, you have to pay some taxes. But how about the the legal limit that you need to pay? So let's let's not just put the right numbers in the right boxes. Let's keep some of that money. I, I like talking to a person like you because you come across very strong on the on the phone call as we talk. And how about being strong with the auditor. Do you like to do that too? Yes, we, we like to, everything we do, when we do a tax plan, we have the code section that says you could do it, okay? And another thing that. we do is that. we work with we, you, we make sure that you document the things that we tell you to do, all right? So right. just doing it isn't good enough. You need to do it, you need to document it, you need to cross your T's, oh. dot your I's. Yeah. You're much closer to this than I am. This is on a normal agenda of phone calls. So I'm going to ask you a few questions that are unique. I noticed that everybody is a little nervous when you talk about the IRS. Now, but let me be completely transparent. I did get in trouble with the IRS once. I had a bankruptcy that, that the company went broke, it went upside down. And I, the, the CPA that worked for me was rolling the taxes from uh, quarter to quarter. And the taxes were running 300000 a quarter. So now you know the size of that yes. business. All right, so three thousand. He's rolling it. I don't need. I don't know that's happening because I didn't even sign checks in that company. I had two hundred thirty employees. All right, so so I never even signed checks in that company, and uh, he rolled it and rolled it. And, and anyway, the the company went upside down, and of course I was the president and the founder of the company, and was responsible for that debt when it came down. Yes, they came to visit me and uh, praised me, apprised me, whatever the correct word was, of what my liability was. And I said, Oh my goodness! I said, Here, all this crisis is coming down around my head. How do we handle this? So I ultimately had to pay them. And I'm going to say something that might not be beneficial, but maybe it is. The IRS never gave me a bad time. They said, look, you owe this money. How are you going to pay it? And I said, all right, here's what I'll do. And they said, okay, if you can't meet your payments, you need to call us and tell us what's going on and why. And you know what? It was a couple of times I couldn't meet the payment. It took me more than a decade to pay off those debts. And they never hassled me in all that time. Now, can you imagine this? Everybody's terrified the IRS. And I said, you should be more terrified of, of someone out on the street that's going to do something to you than you should the IRS. They never gave me any problem at all, but they told me I owed it. Now, I wasn't going to go anywhere. I wasn't going to skip the country or do anything like that. I had no intention of any of that. And maybe they knew I, I wasn't going to. I don't know what, but they never hassled me. So the guy that advised me, had to, I remember him well, he said the same thing you said. Just give them all the documentation after we've checked it. And this is what you're going to have to do. And are you prepared to do that? And I said, of course. He said, what are you going to do if you can't do it? I said, I guess I have to tell him I can do it. And that's the way we did that thing for a decade. Can you believe that? You know what? The IRS, basically, they just don't want you to ignore them. If you communicate with them, you'll be okay. Yeah. And so they, I like your approach, a much better approach. First of all, you've got more than one person that handling the money, which I didn't have. That was not a, that was not a good practice of mine. Although I did have a, a big eight accounting firm at that time, supposedly checking on the guy, this guy, but he didn't do all that, but they didn't do that. But they, the challenge is, I think everybody's afraid of the IRS. And I think what you said a few minutes ago, and uh, I, I want to uh, repeat it in my words, not yours, is that if you do this right, folks, and you've got it documented and you've got someone there to argue the point for you. I never had to argue with him because the accountant always did all that for me. He just said, look, let me just handle it. You come into the last meeting and they're gonna ask you a few questions that did you agree or disagree? And that's all I ever did. And I suppose you run your practice much the same way. You correct, can, correct. You, you, you're, you're, you're one on one. How many people get audited out of out of a uh, hundred thousand people? Do they have numbers on that? I, I think their audit rate is probably less than two point five percent on um Schedule wow. C's, and I think it's less than one percent on corporations. It's a low number, but you know what? Here's the thing: if you if your numbers coming up, you want to make sure you're doing everything correct. Yeah, so that's yeah, why we, exactly. we make sure exactly. the client yeah. documenting what okay. they're doing, and this way, if if they do get it ordered, it's not a big deal. Okay, all right. I want to ask you a few questions, which I'd like you to volunteer. Tell me well, more about what you'd like people to know about you because I only prepared a half a dozen questions and I know there's a lot more that you'd like to tell people. So I've got at least another five minutes to go. So if you'd like to tell us more about you and your firm and what you can do for people, I'd like you to do that. Believe me, the audience needs, and I'm highly recommending, 
the audience needs what you have. And before you start with who you are and your web address so people can get that free book. Sure. Okay. I'm Craig Cody. I'm a CPA. And our website is craigcodyandcompany.com forward slash imagine wealth. And if you Google me, I better come up number one. And what we do is we work with business owners and we help them keep more of what they make. So depending on what industry they're in, as long as they're making money and they're paying taxes, we could typically pay, save them a, a nice chunk of change that they can then take that money and do what they want, whether it's put money away for retirement, put money away for their kid's college, go on vacation, buy shoes, invest in their business. There are those <laughs> that take that money and they use it for marketing, so they really compound it. We work with our clients on a regular basis. There's a lot of communication going on. I'm a big believer in communicating. I think I'm a pretty good communicator. I learned my first career, I was a New York City police lieutenant. So I know I learned how to communicate with people across all different walks of life. And oh boy. I think you should just make sure you're speaking with your CPA on a regular basis. Okay, now for people who tuned in late uh, that haven't listened or, or just get on the podcast, tell them how you do this communication because I think you're very unique. You might not think you are, but I think you're pretty darn unique because you're using Zoom and tell people a little bit about that that don't know. Sure. Once you become a client of ours, we, we do all your bookkeeping and we have a monthly call via Zoom where we go through your P&L, your balance sheet. And we talk about what you're doing and what you need to be doing a little differently and making sure you're taking advantage of all the different things within the tax code that's going to save you money. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick example, and that might remind you to tell me some other things. So I have this, I had two different dentists come through my class and recently, and one guy, he had, he had really paid a lot of taxes, a lot as he's running. And I was not his advisor for any of that, of course. But he came through my, my, my course, first through my course materials and then to a, basically a webinar. And then he came to an actual seminar and I taught him how to buy these tax defaulted properties. He lived out in the middle of Kansas. And so there wasn't very much right around where he lived because it was very rural. So he went to Kansas City and his wife was really upset because she didn't like him to spend all this money. And on the way to, to actually doing something, I introduced him to a person like yourself. And but the two of them that called me back in a very short period of time, like in a month and a half, and said, we can do more deals. And I said, why can we do more deals suddenly? We couldn't do them two months ago. He said, we found out how to save $70,000 on the last two years' taxes. I said, you guys kidding me? And they said, no. The only reason they wanted me to know is because they wanted, I introduced the two of them. And so I am such an advocate of what you're doing that I can't, uh, I can't encourage people more to do this. This guy took that money, he went to Kansas City, he, he bought properties at a tax auction. Sure enough, he got finished it with the auction and within the same day, he actually sold three of the properties. In the same day, wow. but showed up late, showed up late and he doubled his money. He just doubled his money. That was just absolutely amazing. And here he was, he was making all that money and now he just made all that much more. The point is he saved all this money. Now he had a ton to spend and now he even made more money. I'm a big advocate of what you say. Okay, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll button it up for today unless you have any other things that you want to tell us about. And if you do, I've, I've got a few minutes left. The, the only other thing is I'd like to plug, we just came out with a, uh, a podcast. Um, Oh, great. Okay with you, it's actually the, the Progressive Dentist Podcast. We, we have a lot of dental clients, and that's why we decided to go with the Progressive Dentist Podcast. But um, that's available on iTunes. And I, I really just have to, you should be communicating with your CPA. You should, if they're not, you should reach out to them and try. And if not, then you have to make a decision and maybe move on and find somebody that will communicate with you. Because whoever it is, the more you communicate with them, the more they should be able to save you money. Okay. And you do that by using Zoom. You're right up to date. You're doing things where it doesn't matter where they are in the country and they can c communicate with you or one of your, one of your staff people and do it face to face, see each other. Exactly. Face to face is hard to get with a CPA today, but if they can do that in your office and you can do it electronically, I think that's one of them. I really appreciate you, you being on board. Uh, I think I interrupted you. So go ahead and that's jump right in. But you think how much time you spend commuting to go and meet people or if you're oh. a business owner, you have to leave your office or what here you, you pop on. I have clients as far away as Oregon and we're in New York. So you pop yeah, on yeah. zoom, get ready yeah. and there you are and you're yeah. done. There's no commute. Everybody's happy. Everybody's comfortable. And you can record it if you want. Exactly. And I don't have to get dressed up. 
but you have to dress from the hips up. That's, that's right. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Put on a shirt anyway. I got that. Craig, thank you. It's been a delight. I look forward to seeing you in, along the road. And uh, anything I can do to help you, just yell back at me. Well, okay? Ted, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Believe me, it's my pleasure. I, I hope we can uh, help generate some new business for you. Thank you. Hi, this is Linda. Don't forget, you can listen to more episodes at tedthomaspodcast.com. You can also listen to Imagine Wealth Without Risk on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. 